Welcome to Mystical Technology. Grigory Rasputin is a figure shrouded in numerous myths and legends, but in many instances, these incredible tales are rooted in truth. Here are 10 intriguing facts about the Russian mystic who became closely associated with the Romanov family, particularly the Tsarina, and ultimately contributed to its downfall. Despite his association with Russian royalty, Rasputin was born into a family of impoverished Siberian peasants, with his father working as a farmer. Although much has been said about Rasputin, little is actually known about his childhood and early adulthood, as reliable information about this period is scarce. Rasputin was a family man in his early years, marrying a peasant woman named Praskovia Dubrovina at the age of 18. The couple had seven children, although only three survived into adulthood, despite Rasputin's later reputation as a womanizer. Rasputin embarked on a pilgrimage in 1897, ten years after his marriage, and spent several months living at the St. Nicholas Monastery in Verkatura, which was around 300 miles away from his home village. During his stay, Rasputin is believed to have undergone a profound religious experience that transformed his outlook on life. For the following decade, Rasputin traveled extensively around Russia and beyond, presenting himself as a self-proclaimed holy man and preacher with the ability to heal the sick. Despite his claims, it is improbable that Rasputin possessed any mystical healing powers. After Rasputin appeared to alleviate the bleeding of the Tsar's hemophilic son, Alexei, one night, the Tsarina came to believe in his healing abilities. This led to Rasputin gaining greater influence over the Romanov family. While Rasputin was successful in reducing Alexei's bleeding episodes, historians have offered several explanations for this, such as calming the young prince down through hypnosis or advising against administering aspirin, a blood thinner. None of these explanations include the idea of Rasputin having mystical healing powers. Rasputin was infamous for his appalling table manners, including the habit of licking spoons before using them to serve others, as well as frequently having food stuck in his beard, which would occasionally rot. His lack of personal hygiene was also well known and widely criticized. Rasputin referred to himself as a Christ in miniature. When confronted with accusations of a drunken public incident, in which he allegedly exposed his genitals and boasted of having sexual relations with the Tsarina, Rasputin defended himself to the Tsar by making this statement, as reported by biographer Francis Welch. Rasputin survived at least one assassination attempt. On July 12, 1914, he was stabbed in the stomach by Kionya Guseva, a 33-year-old peasant woman who was a follower of Iliodor, a former priest and supporter turned enemy of Rasputin. While Guseva claimed to have acted alone, it is believed that she may have had accomplices. Despite his injuries, Rasputin survived the attack. Rasputin survived the attack by Guseva, but reportedly experienced pain until his death one and a half years later. However, he ultimately succumbed to another attack. On the night of December 29, 1916, Grigory Rasputin died at the palace of Prince Felix Yusupov, though the exact events leading up to his death remain unclear. According to Yusupov, who was among a group of nobles concerned about Rasputin's influence over the Tsar and Tsarina, they lured him to the palace and attempted to poison him with cyanide-laced cakes and drinks. When this failed to kill him, they shot him multiple times and threw his body into the river, where it was discovered several days later. Correction, it seems there is some debate among historians about how exactly Rasputin died, as the accounts of Yuzupa and Porishkevich are not entirely reliable. While they both claim to have shot Rasputin, there is some evidence to suggest that the cause of death was actually drowning, as Rasputin's body was found with water in the lungs. Additionally, the gunshot wound to the forehead may have been inflicted after Rasputin was already dead, as part of an attempt to stage his death as a suicide. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications of our most recent episodes. Remember, the truth is out there.